drummingforlife.com. Hey there, it's Vaughn at drummingforlife.com. Aloha, hope you're doing well. All right, we're going to go deep into the world of, of trading fours. Now, trading fours is nothing more than just soloing for four measures. So like a piano player will play four measures of solo, and then you'll play four measures of solo, and then we'll just kind of go back and forth like that. That's, that's all fours is. I have some, some great videos already I posted about this, uh, and I'll put the links below in the description, so you can go check those out as well. And today we're going to use uh, a, an excerpt of a video that's called, uh, the, the song is actually called uh, Belmont Avenue, and it's a rearranged version of If I Were a Bell, a really famous jazz standard. And we're going to basically get to really enjoy the playing of Dr. Philip Strange on piano and Tetsuro Aratama on bass, uh, two great first call uh, jazz musicians here in Japan. And this, this particular video is part of my Brushes Mastery course, uh, one of 22 practice videos you have over there at jazzdrumschool.com. I've also got a drumless track version of this at vonbaronstore.com as a part of my Almost Jazz Standards Volume 1 uh, drumless track collection. So I hope you'll check all that out. Now before we get into that, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like what you're seeing here. Uh, please go ahead and swish that like button and, uh, and leave a comment. I'd love to connect with you and I do respond to all of my comments. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play along with the excerpt first and uh, just give you an idea of what I would play uh, as fours uh, in this particular context. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break it down you know, four measures at a time. And I'm going to help you kind of understand my thinking and what I might play in each of those different four measure solo opportunities. All right, so check this out. I'm really trying to match the character and the quality of what's being played, right? So if, if Phil is playing something, and he's always just such a great uh, guy to play fours with because he plays such masterfully, masterfully uh, crafted fours and, and, and eight measure phrases and things when we, we trade eight fours and eights. And it just always feels good and always inspires me to kind of think of what can I play that's going to contribute to this context. And the thing I'm always thinking about is it's, it really is a conversation. So if, for instance, we're having a conversation about pizza, and you say, I really don't like pizza, I like calzones, and then I say, oh yeah, well, I, like, I like pizza more than calzones, and blah, blah, blah. We're talking about something specific, a specific topic. That's how jazz is, as a language, as a thing we're talking about, a conversation we're having from start to finish in the song. If, for instance, you say, I like calzones, and then I say, well, I went to this great movie the other day, and I saw this, blah, blah, blah. blah they're not related, right? You don't, the calzones and movies are not related to each other. I mean, you could eat a calzone at a movie, I guess that would be related, but in this case, we're not, not really doing that, right? So uh, it's important that we're, we stay uh, couched and focused on that, the, the intent and the direction of the conversation that's going on. Uh, so let's go ahead and I wanna take you through each of the different fours and I'm gonna kinda of give you an idea of what I would play or how I'm thinking uh, when I'm listening to the, those and figuring out my fours to the, for those particular spots. Okay. So, okay, so one of the important things I want you to do is one of the important things I want to point out here, and one of the things I want you to do is to go and study the masters. 
go and listen to sax players solos and bass player solos and piano solos and guitar solos and vocal scat solos and and I want you to be able to sing every note in your favorite solos and what I want you to do is get away from thinking about the drums sometimes we think as drummers if I just focus more on drumming then I'm gonna get better and be more musical it's not really the case if you focus on other musicians and what they're playing which is what you need to do from start to finish when you're playing jazz don't think about yourself think about everybody else listen to everybody else when you do that and you can really start to sing solos your phrasing and your ideas are going to sound better on the drums oftentimes we think if I just learned this paradiddle fill and blah 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 it's gonna make everything better it doesn't because we don't have a really specific context in which we're using it and we don't know how to connect that paradiddle to what we're what we need to play that's the missing piece so you need to learn the language you need to be able to sing those solos and then your hands will start to adapt and kind of form around those phrases as opposed to you're trying to make other phrases fit your hands right so just a really important point so when I'm hearing this you know I could do something like that right uh, but I'm, I'm really continuing that conversation right and what the thing is nice about what he's playing is he goes da ba ba space ba da ba 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 space ba do ba ba so I could also go sa da bu ba sa bu ba sa bu li bu ba 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 do do ba do ba you know so something similar right space space and then ending so there's a kind of way that you can craft that if you're really thinking about uh, kind of what what he's what he's really playing uh, it can really give you uh, insight into what you need to play in your fours and your solos. It's not a free-for-all. It's not an opportunity to go chopsy and crazy. It's an opportunity to continue that conversation. Let's go to the second one. Okay, so you know I've got this kind of great on the end of that 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 phrase. What could I do with that? I could play that maybe in the middle of my fours or the end of my fours. Uh, I would encourage you to play something that that kind of n noticeable uh, right away. So if he goes babada be bop, don't go babada be bop. Mm, just sounds like copycatting, but if you can you can put it in kind of in the middle of what you're playing or the end it might work Check this out So I kind of put it in the middle let's put it at the end one two uh, So there's another way you can do it, right? You can put it, put it on the end, you can put it in the middle, whatever. Whatever works for you, go ahead and try that. Uh, this is a, just a, a, a nice little trick and a way to continue the conversation that was, that was already started in those previous four measures. Let's go ahead and check out the, the third four. Okay, so now he's, he's adding more notes. You know, there's a lot more action happening. The energy level just went up. So that gives me kind of a creative license, gives me an opportunity to maybe I can do some more kind of uh, interesting, uh, maybe a little more chopsy kind of thing uh, to kind of fill in that space and match that energy. So check this out. Something like that, where it's kind of, you know, kind of similar, but maybe a little bit different. 
uh, kind of like a theme and variation. Uh, but you know, it's that kind of, it gives me more, uh, I can, I can, I want to try to match the energy. Just like if somebody comes up to you on the street and says, Hey, how's it going? And if you go, Hey, how's it going? I guess it's kind of like, what? What's wrong? What I do, you know? It's it's that kind of thing. So he's coming at me. Blah, 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 blah. I can blah, 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 you know? Not totally copying everything he's playing, but, but really matching the energy and maybe matching some of the rhythm that he's playing uh, just keeps it interesting, keeps it keeps that energy flowing. Let's check out the last four. Now, this four actually goes back to, this is the this is the second chorus of the solo from the video, and uh, and this last four goes back to the head or back to the melody. So check this out. So you can see at the end there, it, it went back into two, playing in two, going back to the head, back to the melody. So what we're gonna, what we want to do is think about the last, the last four of what we're playing, of uh, this particular solo is going back to the head, back to the melody. So what can I do to shape my solo to then set up the melody again? Notice the dynamic level comes down, right? Maybe we're up here with our with our soloing. At the end of the, that last four, that last four measures, I need to be back down here. So how can I make that happen? So check this out. One, two, one, two, three. So you kind of see, I'm just kind of finding, I'm finding my way through. I may have a little, little busier or a little, the dynamic level may be a little higher in the beginning. And then I just kind of gradually bring it down to set up and go back into the, the head, go back into the melody. Uh, and so it's changing feels and it's changing dynamic level, right? You're going from playing in four to playing in two. You're going from maybe playing in uh, forte down to maybe mezzo forte or maybe mezzo piano. So you're changing a couple of different things there. So your solo has to reflect that, has to match that shape, okay? Uh, now, I hope this, this, this kind of breaking it down section by section is helpful, uh, and I hope it gives you kind of some insight into what I'm thinking about uh, when I'm trading fours and soloing with a band. Just a couple more things I want to mention. Uh, I have a blog at vonbearmusic.com that is all set up for drummers, and it's got some, the real focus is about how to connect your drumming to music and to the other musicians you play with, how to stay healthy for drumming, and the music business of drumming. So I hope you'll check that out. I also teach Zoom lessons at, uh, and you can sign up for those at uh, vonbearnstore.com. You can also download the drumless track version of this video that we were working with today. Uh, it's a part of the, again, part of the Almost Jazz Standards uh, Volume 1 uh, drumless track collection, and you can download that at vonbarenstore.com. Uh, it's the, the song is, again, uh, Belmont Avenue. Now, uh, the last thing is I have my Brushes Mastery course. Of course, the video is in there, included in that, and uh, you can sign up for that, enroll in that at Jazz Drum School. Dot com. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. And as I always say, keep on drumming. Take care. Drumming for life. Dot com.